It all starts with this tiny crystal. Okay. A brand new mineral discovered in 2012. It's called keothweed. Keothweed. Oh, but <laughs> there's the catch. There's only one specimen. So you're telling me there's just this one tiny little piece of earth, and it's unlike anything we've ever seen before. Yeah. Wild. Where'd they even find it? Picture the Mogok Valley well, in Myanmar, a place already famous for gems, rubies, sapphires, all this incredible stuff. And it's this breathtaking landscape carved out over millions of years by the collision of the Indian and Eurasian plates. Okay, so we're talking immense forces shaping the earth. Yeah. That's got to be a recipe for some seriously unique geology. But this Kayath Wait, it's not just another pretty gem, right? No, it's so much more. It's forcing scientists to rethink what they even know about heavy elements, like bismuth and antimony. These elements don't usually like to hang out together. Right. But in Kyothrate, they're bonded in a way that's never been seen before. Wait, so how is that even possible? Like, what's holding these, like, incompatible elements together in this one-of-a-kind crystal? This is where it gets really interesting. Hold on to your hats, because we're about to step into the world of Einsteinian physics. Einstein. Like, the theory of relativity, Einstein. Mm -hmm. What does that have to do with the tiny crystal from Myanmar? Well, because of the sheer size of bismuth and antimony atoms and the speed their electrons are zipping around, relativistic effects actually come into play. What? Basically, those electrons are moving so fast that they actually experience a sort of shrinking, a relativistic contraction. Okay, my brain is officially bent, mm -hmm. but I'm following so far. So these heavy atoms are experiencing relativistic contraction, but what does that have to do with Kyathwaite's unique properties? Well, because those inner electron orbitals are shrinking, it changes the way bismuth and antimony can bond with other elements, like oxygen. They form stronger, more focused bonds, almost like magnets with a concentrated field. So relativistic contraction is like a superpower for these heavy elements, letting them bond in ways that defy, like conventional chemistry. But how does this translate to Kythwite itself? Well, that's where we connect the dots. Those superpowered bonds, dictated by relativistic effects, create a unique crystal structure that simply wouldn't be possible without that contraction happening at the atomic level. Hold on, so you're telling me that this tiny crystal is a tangible manifestation of Einstein's theory of relativity. It is. That's mind-blowing. How did anyone even figure that out? I mean, does someone just look at this reddish-orange crystal and shout, relativity? It wasn't quite that dramatic, but it was a remarkable journey of scientific detective work. It all started with a local miner who knew the Mogok Valley like the back of his hand. Okay. He found this tiny, unusual crystal unlike anything he'd ever seen. So we've got a seasoned miner, a unique crystal, and a mystery waiting to be unraveled. This is getting good. What happened next? Did the miner know he'd stumbled upon something extraordinary? He knew it was different, but he couldn't, like, put his finger on it. Yeah. So he did what any curious person would do, he sought out an expert taking it to a local gem trader. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. But this trader, I mean, he'd seen countless gems from the Mogok Valley. Surely he could identify this mystery crystal. Not so fast. Even the trader, someone with years of experience dealing with precious stones, he was baffled. This thing didn't match any of the usual suspects. Okay, so now we've got two experts stumped. The plot thickens. What happened to the crystal? Did it end up gathering dust on a shelf somewhere? Not a chance. The trader, he recognized that this might be something truly special. Right. So he decided to call in a specialist, a gemologist, someone with scientific training. Okay, now we're talking. A scientist with specialized tools and knowledge. Did the gemologist crack the code? He examined it closely, measuring its properties, even using fancy techniques like spectroscopy. But even he couldn't definitively identify it. He knew this was something truly extraordinary. So even with all that expertise, they're still in the dark. Mm -hmm. What did they do? Did they send it off to some high-tech lab in a faraway country? That's where our hero, Dr. Kai Alfu, comes in. Okay. The gemologist realized he needed someone with even deeper knowledge of Myanmar's minerals. Right. So he reached out to Dr. Kai Alfu, a leading geologist who dedicated his life to studying the Mogok Valley. And this is where the story gets really interesting. Okay, I'm hooked. Dr. Kaya Thu, the expert on Myanmar's geological treasures, finally gets his hands on this mystery crystal. Did he immediately recognize it as something brand new? Not quite. Even for an expert like him, confirming a new mineral is a long, meticulous process. It's like solving a complex scientific puzzle. And this one was especially challenging. So what did he do? What were the first steps in unraveling the mystery of this tiny crystal? First, he took a close look at its physical properties. 
that reddish orange color, the surprisingly high density, its luster. This gave him some initial clues, hinting at the presence of heavy elements. But those clues weren't enough to solve the puzzle he needed to go deeper around. He did. But to understand what those heavy elements were up to, he needed to delve into the crystal's atomic structure. And for that, he needed to bring in the big guns of science. Okay, what kind of scientific firepower are we talking about here? He needed tools that could reveal the very building blocks of this mystery crystal. Tools like X-ray diffraction and electron microprobe analysis. And what those tools revealed, it was absolutely astonishing. These high-tech tools, they gave Dr. Kaya Thu an unprecedented glimpse into the heart of the crystal. First, he used X-ray diffraction, okay. which essentially creates a unique fingerprint of the crystal's atomic arrangement. It's kind of like shining a light through a kaleidoscope and seeing how the mirrors create these different patterns. So by analyzing those patterns, you can identify the minerals, so like a fingerprint database for crystals. Exactly. But when Dr. Kaya Thu compared this crystal's fingerprint to the database of known minerals, there was no match. Wait. It was like nothing anyone had ever seen before. Talk about a eureka moment. Mm. But he wasn't done, was he? Just knowing the structure wasn't enough to declare a brand new mineral. You're right. He needed to know what this crystal was made of, which elements and in what proportions. And that's where electron microprobe analysis comes in. Okay. This technique uses a focused beam of electrons to identify the elements present and their concentrations. Think of it like a microscopic chemical inventory. Okay. So he's using this high-tech tool to essentially get a recipe for the crystal. What yeah. did it reveal? The results were mind-blowing. The analysis showed that this crystal was primarily composed of bismuth, antimony, and oxygen. But here's the kicker. The ratio of those elements was completely unique, unlike any other known mineral. So not only did this crystal have a one-of-a-kind fingerprint, but it also had a never-before-seen chemical formula. At this point, it must have been pretty obvious that he was dealing with a new mineral. The evidence was mounting, but... Declaring a new mineral to the world isn't as simple as just announcing it. Right. There's a whole process. And it's overseen by a very important group, the International Mineralogical Association, or IMA for short. The IMA. They sound like a pretty serious bunch. Mm -hmm. What's their role in all this? They're like the guardians of the mineral kingdom, the ultimate authority on what qualifies as a new mineral and what doesn't. And they have very strict criteria that have to be met before a discovery can be officially recognized. So it's not enough to just find something unique. You have to jump through some serious hoops to prove its legitimacy. Exactly. Dr. Kyle Thu had to prove this crystal was naturally occurring, meticulously document its properties, and explain how it was distinct from every other known mineral. It's like submitting an application for a new mineral, complete with all the supporting evidence. And then I'm guessing there's a panel of experts who scrutinize every detail. What a nerve-wracking process. It is. There's peer review, where other scientists carefully examine the findings, and often additional tests are needed. This whole process can take years. Years? That's a long time to wait for validation after such a groundbreaking discovery. But Dr. Kaio Thu, he persevered right. He did. And his patience and dedication paid off. Mm. After years of meticulous research, the IA finally recognized his discovery as a brand new mineral. Imagine the sense of accomplishment, knowing he'd contributed something truly unique to the world of science. What a victory. And to top it off, they named the new mineral after him, Kaiothuit. It's not every day you get a mineral named in your honor. That's got to be a pretty incredible feeling. It's an honor reserved for those who make truly significant contributions to the field. But the discovery of Kyothu wasn't just about recognition for Dr. Kyothu. It opened up a whole new chapter in scientific exploration. Okay, so what were the big questions that scientists were now eager to answer thanks to this tiny crystal? The first one was, how did it form? Remember, we're talking about those incompatible elements, bismuth and antimony, bonded together in a way that defies conventional wisdom. Scientists were eager to reconstruct the precise sequence of events, like the geological recipe that led to Kyothwaite's formation. So it's like a geological whodunit, trying to piece together clues from millions of years ago. Exactly. But it wasn't just about understanding the past. Kyothwaite also posed a challenge to our understanding of the present. Remember those relativistic effects, the way those heavy elements were behaving. Right, those shrunken electron orbitals creating those super strong bonds. Well, those effects have implications that extend beyond just this one crystal. Scientists started to wonder, could Kyothwaite's unique properties be harnessed for new technologies? Ah, so we're not just talking about scientific curiosity here. This discovery could potentially have real-world applications. That's the exciting part. 
Kaiathwaite became a sort of natural laboratory, allowing scientists to study those relativistic effects and explore their potential. And the more they learn, the more they realize that this tiny crystal might hold the key to innovations we haven't even thought of yet. Okay, now I'm really intrigued. What kind of innovations are we talking about? What could Kaiathwaite potentially be used for? One area that researchers got particularly excited about was electronics. Kaiathwaite's unusual electronic structure, thanks to those relativistic effects, hinted at the possibility of creating new types of semiconductors. Hold on, semiconductors? Aren't those the heart of our computers, smartphones, pretty much all of modern electronics? Exactly, and Kaiathwaite offered the tantalizing possibility of building semiconductors that were faster, more efficient, maybe even capable of things we haven't even imagined yet. Okay, now we're talking science fiction coming to life. Right. But it wasn't just about faster computers, was it? What other potential applications did they envision? Kaiathwaite's high density and unique optical properties also caught the eye of researchers working in fields like optics and photonics. We're talking about potential advancements in telecommunications, imaging technologies, maybe even lasers. So this tiny crystal, a single unique specimen, could potentially revolutionize entire industries. That's pretty incredible. It is, and it all goes back to that fundamental lesson of scientific discovery. You never know where the next big breakthrough will come from or what kind of ripple effects it will have. But beyond the potential technological advancements, there's another layer to this story that I find even more captivating. It's the human element, the personal stories intertwined with this scientific discovery. You're right. The discovery of Kaiathwe wasn't just a scientific victory. It was a triumph for Dr. Kaiathu and for his home country of Myanmar. You know, earlier you mentioned that Dr. Kaiathu faced some challenges in his career. What kind of obstacles did he overcome to make this incredible discovery? Myanmar has faced political and economic hardships over the years, which often meant limited resources for scientists like Dr. Kaya Thu. He had to be resourceful, creative, and incredibly persistent in his pursuit of knowledge. Wow, that puts his achievement into a whole new perspective. To make such a groundbreaking discovery despite those obstacles, that's truly inspiring. It is. And the discovery of Kaya Thu became a beacon of hope for Myanmar a symbol of the scientific talent and potential that existed within the country. It's a powerful reminder that science knows no boundaries, that groundbreaking discoveries can happen anywhere, regardless of a country's circumstances. Exactly, and it's a testament to the human spirit, our innate curiosity and drive to understand the world around us. But this story isn't just about individual achievement, it's also a story about collaboration, about the power of bringing together different perspectives and expertise. You're right. Think about all the people involved in this journey. The miner who found the crystal, the trader who recognized its uniqueness, the gemologist who brought in scientific expertise, and of course, Dr. Kaio Thu, whose years of research on the Mogok Valley were essential to understanding this discovery. And let's not forget the scientists from around the world who contributed to the analysis and classification of Kaiathwaite. It was a truly global effort, wasn't it? It was. And it's a reminder that science is, at its heart, a collaborative endeavor. The biggest breakthroughs often come from bringing together diverse minds and working together towards a common goal. Okay, I'm sold on the scientific, technological, and even the geopolitical significance of Kaiathwaite. But there's another aspect that I find particularly intriguing, the philosophical implications of this discovery. Ah, you're thinking about the big picture, the questions that go beyond the science itself. What kind of philosophical implications are you pondering? Well, for me, the discovery of Chaos White raises some profound questions about our place in the universe, about the limits of our knowledge, and about the incredible creativity of nature. I see where you're going with this. Here we have this tiny crystal formed over millions of years through a series of seemingly random events, and yet it embodies these remarkable properties that challenge our understanding of physics and chemistry, even touching on Einstein's theory of relativity. It's like the universe was playing a cosmic game of hide and seek tucking away this tiny crystal with its mind-blowing properties, just waiting for us to find it. And the fact that we did find it, that we were able to decipher its secrets, that's both humbling and empowering. It's humbling because it reminds us how much we still don't know, but it's also empowering because it shows us that we're capable of understanding, of unraveling the mysteries of the universe, even at the atomic level. It makes you realize that we're part of something much bigger than ourselves, something incredibly complex and beautiful. And this tiny crystal, Kathwaite, is a tangible reminder of that connection. It is. And I think the discovery of Kathwaite also highlights the importance of curiosity. 
of exploration and of never losing our sense of wonder. Couldn't agree more. It's a reminder that there's still so much out there to discover, both in the vastness of space and in the intricacies of the world right beneath our feet. Exactly. And who knows what other wonders are waiting to be found hidden within the Earth, perhaps even more mind-boggling than Kayoth Reef. Okay, I'm officially hooked. I'm ready to grab my rock hammer and head out on a geological adventure.